in, everybody, to another episode of That Movie Show. Mike Went and Eddie McCabe. You can follow us on social media at Mike Went, at the Eddie McCabe. Hashtag That Movie Show. Of course, the website, thatmovieshow.net, where you can find our archives and more. Eddie, yeah, more. you've had a week, haven't you? I've, I've had a week. You know what? I, I, I would say... Ah, we've all had a week, but you've had a week more than most of us. I, I have had a week more than most of us. Um, I definitely was in the hospital, so I watched a ton of Criminal Minds. <laughs> I, the way you describe it, it sounds like you were part of Criminal Minds. Like, you, oh, like it, the hospitals have basically become like prisons. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the so Like the way you described it, like you have to talk on a phone with the guy on the other side of glass. Yeah, I had a uh, – I did not have COVID-19. So, mm -hmm. so there's that. Yay me. Uh, but again, they didn't one, they didn't know that like in the beginning. Sure. So the first part of going to the hospital, I went to the emergency room in the like wee morning hours of Sunday morning last week. And it walking into the emergency room was like in every zombie movie where like our surviving heroes, like find a government camp or something. Yeah. And like the government like shows up and they're like, Oh, ah, get down, get down. And they like tackle them. And like it's the government run ET. Ah. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and so they're like, look, nobody can come in. You're all by yourself. And it's just like, okay, that's scary. And then they like throw me in a room by myself. And I'm like, you know, I'm like legitimately having issues. Like they were very, very scared for me for a while. So, right. um, like it, this was very, very serious as much. <laughs> just, as despite the lightheartedness, it yeah. was actually like, a serious reason. Like you weren't just going to the hospital for shits and giggles. Yeah. Like, look, here's the thing. I was actually dying and I don't mean that like as like a joke, but I right. can joke about it now because I'm not dying anymore. Does right. that make sense? Okay, yes. moving on. And so they were like tragedy doc... equal time plus time equals comedy, right? Correct. Something Correct. like that. Okay, good. Yeah. And so they uh, they throw me in a room and they hook me up to all the things and they have to test me for Corona, right? To make sure, sure that I don't have the zombie apocalypse virus. <laughs> and they show up with what I would like to call a barbecue match, uh, like sized cotton swab. Okay. So, so like a six inch long, like ear Q-tip. Sexy. <laughs> and, and they shoved Man, that, nice. <laughs> they, they shoved that bad boy up my nose and tried to tickle the top of my eyeball. Nice. To, to test this thing. And I was like, Oh God. Oh Jesus. It was like, what, what's that movie, uh, where the guy gets abducted? <laughs> and they like do weird experiments on him. Fires oh in the sky. God. Oh my God. Yes. Fire. Nobody knows that movie. I'm so <laughs> glad you referenced fire in the sky. That freaked me out. I saw that in theaters as a kid. That shit <laughs> freaked me out. And nobody knows that fucking movie. Everybody wants to talk about alien movies. Never references. Holy shit. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's why we do a show together. I bunch. just got so excited. That's wonderful. I was thinking more like, uh, uh, Freddy's dead where he Q-tips the, the, the deaf kid's ear out, but that's so much better. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I know it was either, it was either fire in the skies or it was total recall where he had to pull the thing out from his nose. Gotcha. One of the, one of the two. So let's go with fire in the sky because more people should see that. I don't even know how you can see that. <laughs> yeah. YouTube basically. Probably. I don't think it's available. Go on. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. And then basically I just spent like four days in a hotel and not a hotel. I wish it was a hotel in a, uh, in a hospital bed watching the worst cable. Um, so what did you watch? Uh, I watched a lot of criminal minds. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, obviously I watched onward. Apparently fire in the sky is available on stars. If you have a subscription. Oh, very fun. I do not. Uh, well, well, that's too bad. Um, I watched, uh, several, um, of my favorite Kung Fu movies. Okay. Um, because I, you know, had an iPad and <laughs> well, I mean, at least in that respect, you, you were lucky because I've heard like when people are admitted, they get like all their shit taken away from them, like everything. Oh, see, so I got admitted and I mean, then... I understand you weren't being admitted for COVID, but even, even so. Yeah. So I got admitted and then I basically, <laughs> I basically called up my mom and I was just like, look, mom, I need you to go to my place, get this stuff. And then bring it to me. And so they like showed up to the ho the hospital and I keep calling it a hotel. It really wasn't. <laughs> you know what? I think I'm having post-traumatic stress and I'm disassociating. You know, I, I think it's just because everybody else in the world is treating this like a fucking vacation. Yeah. Right. You know, I went to the <laughs> spa. Yeah. 
I went to the, I went to the spa and watched uh, Criminal Minds on an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know what? I hadn't watched Criminal Minds in forever, and I forgot how much I actually enjoy that show. Um, oh, I right. absolutely, I absolutely love that show. It's a delight uh, for as morbid as it is. Um, the one of the episodes I watched, it was it was really interesting. This guy was murdering people by basically tying them to cinder blocks and throwing them in their pools. Hmm. And the reason he was doing it is is because he was crazy um you know as you do as you do not the most Uh, creative way of killing people but it works but he was crazy and the reason he was all sorts of like whacked out was because when he was a kid him and his best friend used to play like pirates in this like woods and they ended up flooding those woods Mm -hmm. like to make like a like a reservoir and When, you know, they were like, they were supposed to go that one evening because they were pirates and they were going to, you know, they were going to say they they had to guard the treasure, uh, even no matter what happened. And the, one of the boys died because, you know, the woods got flooded and he drowned, (laughs) you know? And so this guy went bananas and started murdering people like years later to like make it up to his friend. And uh, it was, uh, it was interesting. It was an interesting one. Uh, but you did say that you also watched Onward. I did watch Onward. I watched uh, I watched a bunch of stuff on Disney Plus. I absolutely love that streaming service. Um, well, it's convenient because that's what we're doing today. Yes. You want to jump into Onward? Yeah, let's just jump into Onward. All right. a chance to walk her. Oh, bad dragon. Back to your lair. Come, dear brother. Our destiny awaits. Okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. I see you've brought sustenance for our adventure. No, it's garbage for the trash can, and you left the lid off. Oh, shoot. Get out of here. Shoot. Get out. Oh. Ugh. Unicorns. We're going on a grand and glorious quest. It's not a quest. It's just a really fast and strange errand. It's totally a quest. Uh, Let me get the business out of the way for Onward. It was... It was released in theaters on March 6th. It had about, what, a week and a half run in theaters? Um, It was released uh, March 6th of this year uh, and then ultimately released last weekend on Disney+. Plus. Uh, Had a budget of $175 to $200 million, only made $103.2 million at the box office. But all things considered, that's not too terrible. Uh, It was, let's see, written by Dan Scallon, Jason Headley, Keith Bunnan, Uh, Dan Scowen also directed it. It stars Tom Holland, Chris Pratt, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Octavia Spencer, uh, and a a few other voices I kind of recognized in there as well. Ali Wong's in it as well. Uh, Tracy Ullman uh, shows up in it. Of course, John Ratzenberger. It's a Pixar movie, so got to get John Ratzenberger in there. Um, So, (laughs) okay. How, How do we start this? Here, uh, I'm, let, me, I, let, me, let me preface this by saying the theme of this movie is very wizardy. Obviously, uh, they go on a quest. They're tr- they're doing a lot of magic spells. Personally, not my cup of tea. I don't. I don't, I'm not a fan of Lord of the Rings. I'm not a fan of the Harry Potters. I'm not a fan of the the you know mythical dragons, fantasy. wizards, fantasy. Uh, it's just it's never resonated with me. So going into it, I was like, ah. 
all right. And it's one of those things like I kept putting it off and putting it off, which should have been a sign of, of what I was going to think of it. And last night I watched it. I had been drinking. So this morning when I woke up, I was like, maybe I was just, you know, had a little too much to drink. Maybe I was in a mood and maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought. So I watched it again this morning with breakfast. Oh, did not like this movie. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, mean, I, I would give it, it a okay. C. I'd give it a C maybe, but it's just like, it wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was okay. Um, I don't think that it was Pixar's best outing, um, you know, in the pantheon, in the pantheon of Pixar movies, Mm -hmm. you know, you have toy stories, one, two, you know, bugs life, you have up Wally, you know, these amazing, amazing movies. And then you have kind of like the Cars franchise yep. and like the Good Dinosaur, yep. <laughs> and and it kind of falls a little bit closer to that. Um, you know, I don't think it's their strongest outing. I don't think it's their worst outing. I think no, definitely, it definitely was their worst worst outing. Uh, and we said this off air, but uh, it it I feel it's absolutely true. If if this was released as a Disney Plus original, I'd be fine with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think it was because it was given because it was a Pixar. It was given the big theatrical release and all that stuff. Uh, it was like, ah, you know, OK. Yeah. Well, the tough part, too, is, is that when you hear Pixar, it immediately associates with excellence. You know, right. I can list so many of these movies mm-hmm. that have won the best uh, animated feature, yeah. you know, Academy they're, Award. They're Academy Award winners. Yeah. yeah, that's like basically the like when onward was announced it w- you know it, at least to me it was like oh so that's the 2021 you know best animated picture, best animated you know, picture right. but i don't necessarily think that's true i don't think you know i didn't think that this movie was great i don't think they fired on all cylinders now again um i am a little bit more of a fantasy person i wouldn't say like i'm a huge lord of the rings fan or, or a harry potter fan of any kind but like I really enjoy Skyrim and that's as fantasy as you can get. Um, I don't you know, know what that is. Uh, it is a, uh, a game on PlayStation. Okay. Um, and it's basically, you're like a half dragon person and you got to go like wander the land solving crimes. It's like okay. Kung Fu, but like in medieval times with dragons, it's like pretty great. World of Warcraft Kung Fu. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. So it's, it's an amazing game. Okay. Um, so I also think that the emotional hook of this movie is just in a very different place than I am right now. Uh, Like in my life, uh, you know, a lot of these Pixar movies, you know, you have what's on the surface. Oh, it's toys that come to life and all this other stuff. But then it's like, oh, but we're also dealing with like growing up and letting go. And it's like, that's the adult theme that like when you reach the subtext, that's what makes these movies so great. And the emotional hook of this movie is the relationship between the, the two brothers. And I, I just don't think that like, I have a good relationship with my sister. I only, right. I only have a sister. I don't have a brother. Right. Um, and so like that doesn't resonate with me in the way that I know that like friends of mine that have complicated relationships with their siblings, they love this movie, you know? I, but okay. And I, I don't need, I have a good relationship with my brother and, but I feel that the, they wanted, they wanted you to think that their relationship was worse than it was portrayed. Right. I mean, because it seemed watching it, it seemed like a generally normal brother's relationship. The younger brother, you know, the, the, you know, metal, you know, hits, touches the older brother's toys and he gets yelled at and oh, give me, you know, noogie and stuff like that. But the older brother still picks him up at school to take him to his birthday party. It's like, that's not like a complicated relationship. The complicated right. relationship would have been if the older brother was supposed to pick him up at school and he came out and sat there waiting and, and had to take the bus home because yeah. the older brother didn't show up. That would add a little bit more conflict to it, but they seemed like they were all in on their quest or whatever the hell they go oh, on. You're um, right. Not not that it means anything, but apparently we are in the minority if you're looking at what Rotten Tomatoes uh, thinks. Uh, critics gave it 88% and audience yeah. 95%. So like, yeah, I, I like, guess people like the movie. Yeah, I, again, I think it's just, I think I'm emotionally, look, and here's the thing, guys. Who knew that this episode was going to be a lot learning a lot about me? Right. <laughs> <laughs> who, who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Um, you know, uh, about eight months ago, uh, my dad got diagnosed with terminal cancers, right? So, right. so I can't watch Coco 
Right. You know what I mean? Like Coco is I just devastating. Like turn it on immediately. Like remember me can't even like that starts and it's just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like, right. Emotionally, I think I'm like, I, again, that's, that's where I put my enjoyment of the movie. It was fine. I enjoyed it. It was, mm. you know, it was a fine movie to watch in the middle of quarantine on a Friday night on Disney plus. I mean, I guess <laughs> I suppose it's not, but it's also like, I mean, when, when all we're doing is sitting around watching TV and watching movies, like if someone was like, Oh, recommend a movie, I wouldn't be like, yeah, onward. I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah. say that. Because even even if you only have Disney Plus, there's like a bunch of other shit on there that I would absolutely recommend. Like when I when I started doing a little bit of you know research, what little research there is to do on a movie that's only a couple weeks old. Um, what I got even more excited about was uh, this is on Saturday. So yesterday, uh, the the Simpsons short that was in front of this in theaters actually got put onto Disney Plus. Okay. Uh, it it's uh it's. So it's uh, basically, it's uh, Play Date with Destiny. It's a Maggie Simpson short. It's five minutes long. And I apparently, I didn't see Onward in theaters, but apparently when you saw it in theaters, as most as all the Pixar movies do, they have a short in front of it. Right. Well, this one was a, a Simpson short. That's uh, it's, cool. It's the second non-Pixar short to play in front of a Pixar movie, and it's the first non-Disney property, quote-unquote, because now Disney owns Fox, yeah. to run in front. What that made me think, I, I actually watched it right before we started recording, and it, it's actually it's good. It's charming. It's a simple yeah, sure. short. But it had me thinking because we mentioned the Academy Awards, and these shorts are usually up for it. Does that mean The Simpsons could be an Academy Award nominated thing? Hopefully. <laughs> Thanks to Disney, because they ruin everything, don't they? Yeah. I love that right. one. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, they ruin everything. Really? Do they? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so so that I got more excited about that than I really did about uh, the actual movie Onward. Um, and there really isn't. I did a little bit of research, and there really isn't a ton of interesting facts to to dig up. I mean, there's a the the standard bunch of Pixar Easter eggs and stuff. The the Pizza Planet truck is in there. Yeah. Uh, the the A A one one three, which is the dorm room number that Lasseter shared with Tim Burton and Brad Bird. Um, that's in there. You know, just all the all the standard. Tropes of, of a of a Pixar movie. Uh, what I did find slightly interesting, and I don't believe this has anything to do with my enjoyment or lack thereof, but it is the first Pixar movie to not involve John Lasseter. Yeah, since since he stepped down what, last year uh, like with uh, with the whole Me Too thing. Uh, but this is the first one to not involve him. Uh, again, I don't believe that has anything to do with it. I, you know, I I wholeheartedly believe that it's just it. This the, the uh, subject matter isn't my cup of tea. I, yeah, I, that's that's exactly what I would say because the beats are fine. There are a few moments, and you know, in this movie that I thought were fun. Everything with the Manticore, uh, I thought was delightful. Like I absolutely loved her. I loved her tavern. I loved when we were first introduced to her. You know, um, I mean, I, she went from six to shit house crazy in about a matter of seconds and burned her place down. Yeah, loved it. Absolutely. You went from slinging hors d'oeuvres to burning your bar down. Like, what? There's no gray area with this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, she yeah. literally was like, oh, here, here's some mozzarella sticks, and the karaoke machine is thrown into the wall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and then the other one is, is uh, you know, where we get the send off to the van. Uh, that was really fun. That was mm. a very fun emotional send off that I, that I thought was really funny for an inanimate object. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, there, there was, I guess, there was moments. Um, I don't know. It, it just, the, I didn't feel like, I, I, I looked at the cast and I'm like, oh, cool. Tom Holland, Chris Pratt, love them. They're going to be working together. But I just felt a disconnect Yeah. between them. And, and, and I know these animated movies are made over time and they very well could have been recording it two different years for all we know. Oh, yeah. But it just it really felt like they weren't ever in the same room together. No, um, which which I feel hurts a movie like this where there has to be that bond, and, and especially because we, you know most of us know them as Spider Man and Star Lord from the MCU, and it's like oh fun, cool, they're in another Disney property, but it's like eh. yeah, uh, the portrayal of Tom Holland or Tom Holland's portrayal in this movie was very interesting mm -hmm. because I think that while. Peter Parker is not a confident person. 
Tom Holland still plays him with more confidence than he played this character who lacks confidence. Right. <laughs> you know, and so I didn't find I didn't find this character as charming. No. Uh, you know, and I think that that's that's the toughest part is that you know, you the whole quest is to finish this spell so that they can have one day or whatever time remaining of that day with their father. Okay, so you want to just jump into it? Yeah, let's jump into it. All right, so basically it's uh, it's Ian Lightfoot, played by Tom Holland. It's his 16th birthday. Uh, his older brother, Barley Lightfoot, is played by Chris Pratt. Their mother is Julia Louis-Dreyfus. And on his 16th birthday, uh, their mother brings down this uh, magic staff from the attic that their father had left behind. And she had to give it to both bro- both boys once both of them were over the age of 16. Apparently, I don't know, dad... dad uh, they they kind of allude to he got sick and died. Yeah, kind, yeah he got of, sick. I, I don't really I didn't really understand how it all happened because it was yada yada over because it's a family movie. Yeah, um, which is exactly how I felt. I'm like they really weren't touching on how he died or how long he had been gone. Well, that's the problem that I have with this entire movie is that it feels like they yada yada over a lot of stuff. Right, that it was just like, hey, I need a couple of more. Yet it was still almost two hours long. Right, <laughs> you know. We we could have taken a chunk of the quest out and just given me a bit more of the backstory so I cared about them getting to the end of the quest. Yeah, like, I, I think that, you know, having him, you know, having memories of the father, like, vague memories of the father, there just didn't really seem to be that emotional connection. I think right. we've talked about it when we whenever I talk about young adult novels, mm-hmm. but I find it annoying when teenagers in post-apocalyptic young adult novels like the hunger games and like the divergent series and things like that uh when they're like something's wrong with this world and it's just like hey bitch you, this is all you know what do you mean you something's think something's wrong wait yeah you, <laughs> you know what i mean it's just like like I, I understand that that's like you know society needs to change i'll be the catalyst or what you know it's a young adult novel i get that but like cool bro go pay taxes yeah Yeah, it's like i always i always have an issue with that in those movies because it's like you as a child would never know anything different right and so it's like it's the same thing with this where it's just like i really want to like my entire life sucks and in my entire life sucks because i never met my father and it's just like i I don't know about that, man. Yeah, like all this time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't I don't know about that. I don't know if I don't know it if also does it? Yeah. Like, it is. Like again, I don't they didn't commit to a lot of the the conflict in this movie. Like like uh Tom Holland's character was supposed to kind of be a nerd, yet the cool kids liked him. Yeah. Like when he approached the cool kids after scribbling a bunch of notes on his hand, which again, a lot of the note taking in this movie, I had a lot of issue with because I couldn't really follow it because he was crossing out stuff, but then he was going back and checking off stuff as if, and I'm like, is he doing these tests or is he just bailing and then doing them? I didn't get it anyway, but he, he goes and invites the cool kids to his birthday party and they're like, yeah, when's the party? We're, we're in, we like cake. And it's like, yeah, so, yeah, so. Is he really? Does he really have a tough life? Is he really? Because I, I think the only person who doesn't like him is himself. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? His brother seems cool. His brother shows up in a Viking helmet with a goddamn unicorn van, be like, let's go party, pal. The cool kids want to come and have cake with you. You're the only one that seems to be up your own ass. It's like, what's going on here? Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's weird. It's because you're right. It doesn't seem like they ever co- they they never fully commit to like really if he was anything. being bullied or something. Give me something. Yeah, give me some reason that this kid's life is so goddamn bad because it doesn't seem like it is. Yeah, but plain and simple. Um. So, so yeah. So they get the the magic staff, and uh, they apparently in the the rug that the staff was wrapped in, there was also this stone. Uh, they put the stone in the thing. Of course, the older brothers all into wizardry and all that horse shit. And there's like a spell. And the spell kind of basically it's reanimator. Yeah, basically. I mean, this could have ended as a horror movie. Like dad could have shown up brains and just been all fucked up. I've seen Pet Cemetery. I know what yeah. happens when you bring the dead back to life. I've seen Hellraiser. Right? <laughs> this could go bad. This could have you been know, you might not weird. want that second half. This that, could have been real weird. Do you think the, the bottom half is dancing? He's trying to eat you. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh so so they do a spell. 
And uh, first, first, the older brother, of course, tries because he's all into this shit. He's like, great. So dad has left me the tools to be a magic wizard or wizard. whatever the fuck. Yeah, wizarder. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, he tries it and nothing, of course. So you know, it gives the younger brother tries it and it starts to work. And yeah. it starts to work and starts to work and starts to work. And we get dad up to about the, the waist when the older brother's like, let me help. And as soon as he helps, it just falls apart because right. he doesn't have the force or whatever. And the, <laughs> he doesn't have the magic juju. Right. So so we got a half a dad. Yeah. And, and they're communicating by tapping their feet. Yes. Cool. OK, wonderful. So at some point they figure out that. The, they need a stone because apparently you could. It, it's basically like a, like a disposable spell. Basically, you only get one <laughs> shot with the stone. Yeah, you only. Yeah, you need. Well, you need the ingredients, right? And then once the ingredients cooked, right. The, and so you know, we need another. We need another phoenix stone. The problem that I have with this entire movie, mm-hmm. right, is that if you just need another stone to finish the spell, right. Why don't you just do the spell again? Find another stone. You know what I mean? Because there's there's more than just one stone. I mean, is there? Well, they found two, right? Sure. So there has to be more than the two, right? You would think so. I don't know. That that seems like the, the Octavia Spencer character, the, the Manticore, seems to know more about that. But she's also batshit crazy. Yeah, right. I mean, she, know, she's she's running a karaoke TGI Fridays, you know, and handing out this this map to the stone as a fucking kid's coloring menu. Yeah. So, you know, I think if she you know, there has to be more than just the two stones. So just do the stone again. See your dad again. What are you? You nerd. Get well, out of here. You nerd. <laughs> yeah. Well, you there's, nerd. there's also the fact that uh, the older brother uh, goes all in on this whole quest thing. Again, he's into this shit. I mean, he yeah. literally he he. He named his van Guinevere. He painted it like a unicorn and purple majestic. It, it was weird. You yeah. know, if this was a Disney movie, he'd have a criminal record. Uh, but, well, he does have a criminal record because uh, I missed that part. <laughs> yeah, because he's like a he's like a terrorist kind of not a terrorist. He's he like is like protesting stuff because they were like trying to tear down the fountain. Oh, so, that's right. That's right. Know? So he's kind of like the older sister in License to Drive, which is in the archives. That movie show dot net <laughs> reference. He is. That is exactly the equivalent. Um, so, but he, he's all in. She was a terrorist. Uh, but he's all in on the whole quest thing, including the fact that you can't just take the highway to get to the stone. Because literally, as you know, he's like, oh, the, the, the easiest route is never the right route when you're on a quest. You have to go. And he's just, I think it's one of those things like they wanted you uh they wanted you to believe that the brother wants to have a bonding thing with his younger brother. But again, they never set up that they have a bad relationship. So who gives a shit? Just drive to the stone. Right. You know, also, why, this, I don't know. Again, maybe I missed some stuff. But all of a sudden, uh, the younger brother has a watch that's a countdown thing that's the exact amount of time before dad disappears again. Where did that come from? Was there an eye, eye watch in this uh Yeah, rug? so... Yeah, so when they figure out that they only have 24 hours you with him. It and I missed it. Yeah, it was in the beginning. It was before they, like, take off. Because I'm like, what a useless thing. It's a, again, everything's just a one-off throwaway piece, item. It's like, oh, yeah. this watch only works for dad's spell, and then it's done. Yeah. <laughs> this stone only works for one spell, and then it's done. What if you need to make another spell? Yeah, right. Also, oh. They seem to be able to do a ton of spells without that goddamn stone. Yeah, right. I don't know why this is the one you need the stone for. So, yeah. so we're going to find a stone and uh, we're definitely not taking the easy route because, you know, we got to fill two hours and they're, they're taking all the off roads and they're getting into shenanigans and they're, you know, yeah, they're, they're weakening and burning the shit out of this thing. And, you know, I mean, that's basically yeah. what it is. It's, you know, Pixar's weekend at Bernie's. It is Pixar's weekend at Bernie's. Uh, yeah, I just, it sucks because this is the, <laughs> here's they the thing. They get accosted by a biker gang of flies. Why they drive full size motorcycles, I don't understand. They just drive three of them, like 80 of them. Just drive 80 of them on a bike? Weird. Yeah, it's weird. The, uh, there is one thing that I will say. This, this is very similar to how I felt, just so you have a reference point, okay. for planes, trains, and automobiles. Okay. Right? John Candy was never as annoying as they like they wanted you to believe that Steve Martin believed he was. 
Okay. Like that's that's this movie where it's like the relationship between the two brothers is never as bad or never was as bad as they like wanted you to believe. Yeah, so but that, at least in planes, trains, and automobiles, it was established that it that John Candy wasn't supposed to be overly annoying. Steve Martin was an asshole. Yeah. Like from Jump Look. Street, Steve Martin was a dick from the start of that movie all the way through it. And you know, he's accosting that woman at the rental car thing. And it's like he's getting himself into every problem he's in. I felt that was the through line. Yeah. But, you know, and he either was way. blaming John Candy. Right. Who just wanted a friend. Right. And either See, way. You misunderstood the whole movie. John Candy is, is a national treasure from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> a national Canadian treasure. Yes. But Play Trades and Automobile still blows. And <laughs> and so this movie, because, like, by the time we get to the point where he, like, has to pretend to be the cop, like, the stepdad cop, yep. and he, like, calls the brother a screw-up, like, the Chris Pratt takes that way too hard. Yeah, I mean, I was in on that thing. I'm like, oh, this is kind of fun. There's a little nice little bit of magic here, a little razzle-dazzle, and then it got way too serious, way too quick. And it's just like, dude, what do you, why, why do we care? What, why do we care that you're a screw-up? You, yeah, you kind of are. You yeah, know? you kind of are, dude. You... And, and we're way too far into the movie for this for this bit of emotional turmoil. Depth. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, yeah, man. Two days ago, maybe even a day ago, because I'm not sure like where we are in timeline and in the stuff. space time continuum. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like I'm not sure where we are in the space time continuum. But either oh, a day or two days ago, uh, you got arrested trying to stop people from demolishing a fountain. And did he yeah. really? I, didn't, I mean, I didn't see any cops there. I just saw a bunch of construction guys cut the chain and let, and he fell. Yeah. Again, look, a, a, arrested is a very loose term. He got arrested but, in Pixar terms. Yeah, he got <laughs> Pixar arrested. By that, he mean his stepdad picked him up. Right. You, you know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, you're a bit of a screw up, dude. Like, you, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know yeah, what you, you kind of. You're kind of a goof. Yeah, you're a goon goof. Come on, what are you? <laughs> Let's let's move along. If we're gonna yada yada anything, let's yada yada. This. Yeah, let's yada yada the fact that you're just like you said it was a screw up. <laughs> My it's, God, you know. Damn, um, <laughs> I also I also thought it was a little underhanded because I'm just gonna. Uh, so Guinevere dies. Um, which I well, yeah they 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 have to. Uh, what what do they need to knock that stone down for? Because they fire yeah, the, the van the into the into the, the thing. Is that trail? So basically. Okay. Like the finally that was the, after he did the the walk across the, the walk thing. across yeah, and like it was a bit of magic and believing and you know yay emotional learning a little bit of Indiana uh, Jones and the Last Crusade yeah a little bit of that so very fun very the very penitent, fun penitent man the penitent man shall pass the penitent man <laughs> uh, and then <laughs> and so yeah they finally get caught up with the cops the cops catch up with them and they're like you got you got to come home now why it's a full blown police chase. To like bring these boys home, where it's just like, hey, we just want you to be safe. They really haven't done anything. Yeah, they haven't done anything illegal. I mean, even the burning down of the tavern uh, was the, her. The, yeah, the, the Manticore kind of took the heat on that one. Yeah. I mean, if anything, the cops should be chasing the mother and the Manticore. Yeah, because they're going cray cray. Because the Manticore burns down an, a you know chain restaurant with families, and yeah. then the mother kidnaps this crazy person. And I think yes. they stole a car. Yeah, probably. And then they definitely killed the pawn shop owner. That happened. Oh, oh yeah. They, they straight up murdered her. <laughs> yeah, that scorpion tailed manticore just totally murdered that iguana. Like and that was Tracy Ullman, too. I had no yeah. idea. But yeah, straight up murdered her. Yeah, yes. They like, murdered she's her. not coming back in the sequel. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, she's not gonna come back for Rush Hour 3. Over a sword. Yeah. Well, you know what? Don't be a don't be a dick. Yeah. That's you know? so just selling the sword. They just want the sword. Yeah. Oh, it's priceless. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's your first mistake. You don't go to a pawn shop and oversell the item you want to buy. Come on. Yeah, right. You undersell it. You undersell it. Ah, to... You know, it's uh, my, my kid's birthday. He, he, he likes the, the wizards. <laughs> yeah, he likes the wizards. Can I get this sword? <laughs> Can I get this sword? My kid likes the wizards. <laughs> my kid, he likes the wizards. His favorite was Ron Artest. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you 14 shekels or whatever the hell you people use as money yeah, now. It's <laughs> currency now. It's uh, a bit of string. <laughs> yeah, and so they're getting chased. And so, yeah, he has to launch the van into the rock to, like, stop the cops from following them. Sure. And that was, you know, crime. Yeah. 
Yeah, because crime and mayhem, and it yeah. was just like, you know, I all all of this, by the way, is just so they can like have two seconds to say hi to dad or ask him right. a question. It's it really is like. Like, uh, yeah, like the end of Temple of Doom, or not Temple of Doom, the last, last crusade, where it's like they get all the way to the end just to like ask one question. Yeah, right. Well, and then this is another thing where, again, another pet peeve of mine in, in movies. I may, I may be misthinking Last Crusade. I think you might be. Cause... Something else. Whatever. But at the end of. Uh, Muppets you Take know... Manhattan. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Muppets Take Manhattan, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Tomato, that bottom. bird, one of those fucking movies on a quest to, you know, yeah. ask a question. <laughs> um, the if everything can be solved by having like a conversation, right? <laughs> Keep coming back to this with every movie, like because it's just so annoying. Because Minotaur stepdad shows up, Minotaur stepdad shows up and like, look, here's the thing, you need to get in this car right now, and they're like, he's like, no. And then they don't say why. And I'm pretty sure that if he was just like, look, Minotaur stepdad or Centaur stepdad, if, if Are you, the same thing? no, Minotaur's Minotaur's a bull. Oh, for Christ's sakes. It's the wrong hoof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, if he was just like, look, here's the, the deal. Oh, stepdad. Oh, oof, oof, oof. Cut out. <laughs> <That's a sin. laughs> He's like, look, here's the deal. If a stepdad, um, we need to go and find this gem because then we get to see our dad who that's half of him right there um, and we can hang out with him for like 45 minutes or something. You know, the longer we have this conversation, the less minutes I have with him. So I got a watch that's going to disintegrate like Mission Impossible at the yeah. end of this quest. <laughs> yeah, I got an Inspector Gadget watch that's going to blow up comically <laughs> at the end of this. So <laughs> Hilarious. We're all uh, dead. <laughs> Uh, but it's just like, can we, you know, like, how about we just all, instead of trying to stop this from happening, right. we all, because this isn't hurting anybody, right. you know? And so, but no, they don't have that conversation and they're on the wrong side of the law because, you know, drama. I mean, it's kind of Thelma and Louise in that respect where it's like, hey, if you all just kind of pump the brakes for a second and stopped killing people, <laughs> you know? Maybe yeah. we could have gotten to a resolution that didn't include you flying off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe. maybe. Maybe we could have got to the stone without the big Lego dragon showing up at the end. I don't know. Maybe yeah. that didn't have to. Ha oh, speaking of that, uh, their pet dragon. Yeah. Maybe the worst animated character I've ever seen in a Disney film. Yeah, okay. It stuck out like a horrible sore thumb. Like, I'm watching it, and it's like, okay, I mean, because, you know, above all else, the animation is, is great. It's a Pixar movie. It's a yeah. Pixar movie in 2020. The animation is gorgeous. But that goddamn pet dragon, I'm like, that looks unfinished. Yeah. Like, yeah. it was like, I don't know. It just didn't look like, it looks like they replaced something else. Yeah, I didn't like is how, it. It's how I really felt, because it was just, it was a different color scheme. It, it The lights, it, it was lit differently. I don't know. I just, it kept sticking out to me every time it was on. I'm like, that thing looks stupid. Yeah, you're and right. Yeah. So they end up finding the stone. And when they find the stone, the, the curse, curse. happens. <laughs> and, you know, which is what the Manticore was trying and the mom were trying to stop. Whatever. Sure. It's a giant stone Lego dragon with a very fun face. Yep. We, um, we, we need a climax. Yeah. We needed a climax of some kind. I mean, you know? something had to blow up. We spent $200 million on this animated film about wizards. Something has to blow yeah. up. Yeah. We can't have Voldemort show up or whatever. So they, uh, yeah, the, the whole point behind the sword, which they had to murder someone for yeah. literally was like, if they throw the sword into the, like the glowing red part, which I'm guessing is the heart of this yeah. Lego dragon that it, kills it yes and the story so yeah. that's what they're doing i don't did they know that the dragon was going to show up is that why no, that was the problem they didn't know that the dragon was going to show up so were they hoping the dragon why did they murder this pawn shop owner for a sword so oh no so the boys didn't know that the dragon was going to show up but, but the, the mom and the man core did ah. and so they were like we got to get the sword because we got to stop them from getting to, from like getting the dragon but if they get the dragon we got to be able to kill the dragon look i got 14 bucks or a bullet in your neck you yeah. choose yeah. okay stab Done. Yeah. <laughs> and so um yeah and so you know 
good guys triumph over evil because right. Disney Pixar. And yeah. and then, uh, you know, they're able to resurrect dad for like four minutes. If that. If that. And and uh, the younger brother literally is watching it happen from like way afar. Like he's like under rocks and stuff like that because yeah. he had just fought the dragon oh. or something. And the older brother is the one that actually gets the moment with them. But I think there was like a conversation between the two of them being like, you go because you well, had more of a relationship with them. Yeah. So so there was an emotional hook that we miss, um, which is probably the thing that was annoying. It was the same emotional hook that was in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Mm-hmm. where uh, Star-Lord has the revelation that Yondu was his dad the whole time. Uh-huh. It was basically that, where it was just like, oh, I did have a father, and oddly enough, it was my older brother. Hmm. That was like that was like it. And because like, uh, Tom Holland the entire time has this like, running list of things that he wants to do with his dad. Okay, and- so, so yeah, and, and that, that, was, that was the thing that was kind of bugging me about the list, because... Again, last night I was watching it impaired, and, and I, I saw him make the list. And then yeah. later in the movie, I see him crossing stuff off, but I also saw the empty checkbox. And I'm like, so did he just do it? No, like, he got mad. He gets mad and crosses Did he do out. it, and instead of checking it, he just decided to, you know, kill Bill this shit and just cross off what he's accomplished? And like, No, he got, he got upset. Okay. And when he gets upset, he crosses the, all of it out, like being like, I'm never going to be able to do this stuff with him. But, but then, then at the end, they're all checked. That they're, they also checked off all the boxes. Because he thinks about all the times that he did it with his brother and uh. he checks off the boxes because he was able to do it because he was like, oh, I had you to do these things with me. So you go spend time with dad because you knew him or something. Yeah, because you met him. Yeah. And, I, and I've just been living through pictures and tape recordings. That was that was an interesting little bit of a sad. Yeah, it's like he's literally talking to an answering machine message, but a one side of an answer machine. He's having a conversation with it. And yeah. he's got all these different pictures on the thing. So he's like talking to different emotions, I guess. Yeah. I'm like, again, though, we find out through all this that he didn't have any relationship with right him. of course and that's and so that's at, the, in the end it's like we should have seen the relationship the older brother had so that that ending would have meant more to all of us right exactly and that that kind of goes back to my thing about like the emotional weight of the movie and it's like y- you as you never knew this guy so how do you know what you don't have right, right? like here's the thing i never had an older brother I never had a younger brother right, right? so I don't know what I'm missing uh-huh. by not having grown up with a brother, but at the same time, I don't f- like, like, it's not like, Oh, my life was lesser because I had a brother. I it's didn't like have- you're searching for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it was never that. And, and it, it's just, it's kind of that normal, uh, you know, it's, it's your normal. Right. And, and I just feel like it's always annoying when, when that happens. Because again, Look, I some, can't speak. Some to people it. grow up in the world and, and they grow up without a father. Not everybody gets a dancing pair of pants. Yeah, right. Consider true. yourself lucky, kid. Yeah, true. You got to weekend and birdies this shit for a weekend. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah. And a guy wasn't trying to kill you the entire time. There is that. It's just a Lego dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I guess uh, in the end, uh, he's he becomes like a full blown wizard because yeah. they kind of. They, they they back to the future the ending where you know roads we don't need roads and the van takes off because he does magic because they yes. get the van back also uh, he bought he like made him a new bought. van because you know magic gets you money as well yeah he's a world famous magician he's in Vegas now cool fantastic uh, people are gonna hate this review but is that onward yeah that's onward <laughs> you know the comments are gonna be you're fucking wrong man it's the yeah, I, movie ever. I mean 95 percent of people apparently like this movie Oh yeah, we're in the we're in the five percent. In the minority there. Um, all right, that's uh, that's Disney and Pixar's onward. Eddie, what are we doing next week? What do you what do you feel like doing? Um, so this movie reminded me of a different movie. All right, uh, that celebrated, I believe, twenty five years this week. Okay. Um, it is about a road trip, another road trip. Um, it is. Is it the movie, movie Road Trip? No, it is not. <laughs> the movie road trip. Um, it is a movie about a father and a son. Um, and they're trying to bond. Uh, it has more emotional depth and weight, uh, and is, uh, what I believe to be a far better movie. And that is the goofy movie. 
Okay. I thought you were going to say Dutch with that O'Neill, but okay. <laughs> I mean, it's between, uh, I was thinking about suggesting that because of like the anniversary or Commando starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, you know, tomato, tomato. You know what? We might have to pick that midweek. So it's either going to be the Goofy movie or Commando. <laughs> It's going to be a flip of a coin, I think. Yeah, <laughs> we might <sure>. do both. <laughs> All right. So there you go. That is uh, onward on that movie show. Uh, thank you for joining us. And please uh, subscribe to any and all podcasting apps of That Movie Show. You can find links on thatmovieshow.net as well as our archives. Uh, please follow the Facebook. It's facebook.com slash thatmovieshowtv. And you can follow myself and Eddie on social media at Mike Went at the Eddie McCabe. Eddie's got a new TikTok that he's filling with content, so go check that out. Here's what all the kids are doing. I don't understand it, but it seems fun. <laughs> Hashtag that movie show. If you want us to review something, please let us know. And uh, starting on uh, on Fridays now, Eddie and I are going to be alternating. Uh, there's another podcast. Uh, it's on Facebook. I think it just started. Uh, it's called Dads Who Drink is the podcast. They reached out to us uh, because they wanted to do a movie review section. Uh, it's on Friday nights. I'll get you the link uh, because, honestly, we, yeah. haven't, we haven't done the first episode yet. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we'll figure the, it out. Link, the link will be there because this is going to be happening on Saturday, and that will have happened Friday night. Just yeah. haven't done it yet. Magic. Uh, but they seem like a good group of guys, uh, and they asked if we would do uh, some movie reviews for them. And uh, we said, what the hell? What else are we going to do in this quarantine situation? So keep an eye out for those links, and we will see you back here next week for either the Goofy Movie or Commando. <laughs> yes! That's Hoobie Valley, Hoobie Hollywood, where any office boy or young mechanic can be.